Okay, let's talk about NES middle grades math exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the NES middle grades math exam. And NES stands for National Evaluation Series. And uh, several states use the NES uh, test as their teacher certification exams. Uh, but again, it all depends on what state you're in. Some states like California, Texas, Florida, have, they have their own state teacher exams. And then some states use the Praxis test as their teacher certification exams. So it just all depends. But again, uh, there are a lot of states that use the uh, NES test as their teacher certification exams. So what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the math uh, you're going to encounter on the NES middle grades math exam. And uh, I would characterize that kind of math as, or the math level, as advanced high school level math, right? If I had to give a kind of a, uh, a description, I think that's the way I would describe it. Because you're going to have to know more than just basic algebra and geometry and obviously middle school and elementary level topics. You're going to have to know, you know, uh, again, more than just middle grades mathematics, okay? Uh, you're going to have to know some advanced high school math uh, concepts, you know, logarithms, um, trigonometry, etc. So um, clearly... Um, you're motivated uh, to teach math or you wouldn't be taking this exam. Uh, but that's the reality of it. And so if you haven't taken a look at what's on this exam, you'll want to do that. Now, uh, before we go any further, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last uh, several years, I've constructed many online uh, math classes to include an NES uh, middle grades math test prep course. Now, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But let's go ahead and get to our problem. Okay, so the way I like to do these problems is, um, obviously, first, tell you what the problem is. And then uh, I'm going to give those of you out there a hint, okay? So if you want, to, you want to hear the hint, just keep watching the video. If you don't want to hear the hint, pause the video and do the problem. And then, obviously, I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so here we go. So what is the problem? Well, here I have some sort of equation I'd like you to solve for x. So it should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. I'd like you to solve this equation, all right? So I have x as the variable. So for those of you who think you know how to solve it, go ahead and pause the video and do so. And for those of you who are like just not sure and you need, you need a bit of a hint, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you now. Okay, so... In mathematics, you know, if we're asked to solve an equation, uh, what we need to first uh, do is identify what type of equation am I dealing with. Because just, just think about in, in algebra or in advanced, uh, you know, high school mathematics. What type of equations do you learn how to solve? Well, we learn how to solve basic linear equations, right? Things like 2x equals 10. Then you have systems of equations. Then you have quadratic equations, right? I'm just kind of going here. Then you have radical equations. Then you have logarithmic equations. You have a ton of different equations. I'm only kind of scratching the surface. You have equations that have to do with matrices or rational equations, um, exponential equations. Uh, so you kind of get my drift, right? Um, we learn several, several types of equations. And let me throw one more in there, trigonometric equations. <laughs> I just didn't, and I was like, oh, let me, let me throw that in there as well. So you learn, uh, we learn uh, how to solve various uh, types of equations. That's a huge part of mathematics. So the first thing is we need to be able to recognize what type of equation we're dealing with because how we solve this is completely different than how we solve this is completely different than how we solve this. Okay, now a lot of the principles do, you know, overlap, okay? But you got to first recognize what are we dealing with, okay? So, first things first. All right. So, what are we dealing with? That is a question, but I'm going to tell you um, anyways, we are dealing with a polynomial equation. You got to recognize these as polynomials. Okay, so we're dealing with a polynomial equation. All right. Now, the quad the quadratic formula, for example, or quadratic equations, are polynomials of degree two. All right. So I'm just kind of throw that in as a bit of a hint. All right. So, but we're dealing with a higher order polynomial equation. So I want you to think back on those things like. Um, 
Oh, let's see here. Uh, the rational root theorem. All right. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, or synthetic division, long division, uh, uh, those type of things. Okay. So that's a bit of a hint. <laughs> I'm kind of going on here. Uh, I'm trying to give you a hint without giving the way the prompt. For those of you, you just need a kind of a little bit of a push, if you will, mental push. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and actually solve the problem. Um, if you're still not kind of with me at this point, don't panic and you know use it as feedback. All right. So I, again, I said this is a polynomial equation, and we need to be able to see what type of polynomial equation are we dealing with. Well. If I was to multiply these two binomials, if I was to multiply this and multiply this, what's the highest power of x, right? So I would use the FOIL method, and I would get x to the fourth power to be the highest power. So I'm dealing with a fourth degree polynomial equation, okay? So what does that tell you? Well, hopefully you know that, all right, that there is a correlation a linkage between the degree of the polynomial and how many roots it has, okay? So this polynomial equation will have four, it will have four solutions. Now, what type of solutions? Well, that's a whole other different type of deal, okay? We could have four real number solutions or we can have a combination of both real and imaginary uh, solutions or complex numbers. So uh, this is kind of, you know, the direction we're going in in this particular problem, all right? So, uh, but the main concept that I want you to kind of remember at this point of the problem is that, hey, when we're dealing with the polynomial equation, we have to uh, look at the degree the, of the polynomial, okay? And that's gonna tell us how many solutions that we need to find, you know, as we solve the polynomial. That's why quadratic equations, they are degree two polynomial equations. There are always two solutions. Okay. Of course, you can have two real number solutions or two complex number imaginary solutions. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get going in this problem. And uh, hopefully this will be pretty straightforward. All right. So the great thing about this problem, the way it's written, is that this is, a, this is already factored for us. Okay. Remember, when you're solving uh, any equation, always factor. Okay. Factor first. It really just helps, you know, uh, oftentimes that's going to lead to exactly how to solve the equation. But in this case, we have one factor, this times this, all right? We have this being multiplied by this, and the answer is zero. So that tells us that we can apply what we call the zero product property. In other words, this thing or this thing, the only way, if we're multiplying, the only way you can get zero is that this or this, or both of these things are, are zero, okay? So that's why we can set each one of these factors uh, equal to zero and solve. So we have x squared minus one is equal to zero, and x squared plus 16 is equal to zero. All right, so here, this is pretty easy. I could do this uh, one or two ways. I could factor this, x plus one times x minus one, it's equal to zero, and then here, we have x plus 1 is equal to 0, x minus 1 is equal to 0, so we get x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to positive 1, or I could have just solved this quadratic equation right here this way. I could have said, okay, x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. I'll move the 1 over to the other side, so I have x squared is equal to 1. Now I take the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to positive negative 1. All right, so here, depending on um, which approach you used, we found one solution, two solutions. So we have two of the four solutions we need to find because we already know that we must find those four solutions. So we got two of them right here, one, two. Okay, now let's move over to this factor. So we have x squared plus 16 is equal to zero. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this 16 over to the other side. So I have x squared is equal to negative 16. So now at this time, uh, hopefully alarm bells are going off because you're saying, okay, I want to solve for x. I want to take the square root of both sides, but I have x squared is equal to the square root of negative 16. If you put that into your calculator, you're going to see your calculator start warming up and smoke will come out of it probably because your calculator 
is dealing with uh, real numbers, unless you put it into a, uh, you know, you have a fancy calculator, you could put it in uh, to imaginary complex number mode, but your calculator is going to give you an error. If you try to take the square root of negative 16, it's going to be like, hey, I don't I'm, I, you know, this is an issue. So what do we have to do here? Well, we've got to do a little um, algebra. So we have to go x squared is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. Because the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 is the square root of negative 16. But the square root of negative 1, by definition, is uh, the imaginary number component i. And the square root of 16 is plus and minus 4. Okay, But the square root of negative 1 is i. So we have our two solutions. x is equal to 4i and x is equal to negative 4i. Okay, so here are our other two solutions. They're imaginary numbers. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have accounted for all those uh, missing roots that we didn't know in the beginning of this problem. And uh, so again, this is just a, an example of solving a higher order polynomial equation, right? So even something like this, let's say 2x is equal to 5, That's this is a polynomial equation of degree 1. This is a polynomial. So <laughs> another, I can throw in a pop quiz, what is the definition of polynomial? You need to be able to understand what, uh, what that is because, you know, at the middle grades math level, you're likely, uh, uh, could certainly be assigned to teach Algebra 1 or maybe Geometry. Yeah, there's def plenty of schools that are teaching Algebra 1, high school level Algebra at 8th grade for your more advanced or accelerated students. So you got to, you know, know what these definitions are. If I'm throwing this term out, polynomial, like you need to know what a polynomial is. Okay, so here we have a degree 1 polynomial. So there's going to be one unique solution. Let's make this easy on ourselves. Let's say it's 10. So x is equal to 5. There is one and only one solution to this degree 1 linear equation, all right? But if I had x squared is equal to 10, now I have a degree 2 polynomial. There are going to be two solutions, etc. So here I'm dealing with the fourth degree polynomial, and this was very easy. But there are plenty of higher order polynomial um, equations that are not so easy. And when there's a whole, <laughs> whole bunch of other things that we have to do to try to find uh, the missing solutions, if you will. All right, but again, you know, in terms of uh, this NES middle grades math uh, exam, this is only one, you know, one topic, one subtopic of equations in algebra. You still got to be ready for all the things, trigonometry. I haven't even gone into geometry. You know, there's a ton of stuff that you have to be ready for. So the key is take these exams uh, seriously, okay? Obviously, you like math. You're good in math, I'm sure. But you got to be, you know, you really have to be immersed in it. These exams are not easy, and people do fail these exams. So, uh, and smart people, <laughs> people who know a lot of math. And I would say probably the number one reason uh, people don't pass these exams the first time out is they underestimate them, okay? They underestimate how up to speed they're going to have to be on all these topics. You just don't know what math prom is going to be coming your way. So you got to be ready for everything. But it's going to be a win-win. It's, you know, if you study super hard for these exams, because one, you're going to set, your, set yourself up for success. And two, you're just going to be a stronger uh, math teacher. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link to my NES middle grades math uh, test prep course uh, in the description of this video, if you want to check that out. Super comprehensive. I think you'll be really impressed with it. If you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out, and I'm posting stuff all the time, so hopefully you, uh, you'll consider becoming a subscriber. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up, and leave me some feedback. Uh, what's your um, you know, background? Are you going from high school to college to teaching, or maybe you are switching careers? Um, you know, I always find it uh, how, you know, it's fascinating how many different ways people can become teachers uh, these days. I think it's really cool. But just remember this, if you're new to teaching, that half of being a teacher is all the 
degrees and all the uh, certifications, all that stuff, you know, everything that's, you know, quite challenging in and of itself just to be qualified to get in the classroom. But the real education in becoming a teacher is learning how to deal with students, parents, administration, grading, all those things uh, that really go on, on the, in, you know, day-to-day -day classroom. And that takes time and experience. I like to use the metaphor of being like an airline pilot, right? You can go to school you know, to a college and learn how to fly, you know, learn, all, you know, everything there is about a jet and how to fly it. But it, it's not until you've, you know, flown that jet for several years and accumulated 10,000 hours of flying where, you know, you really develop the experience and, and you know, uh, to deal with various situations, etc. It takes time to gain experience and there's just no other way to kind of get experience other than to <laughs> spend time getting experience. So, you know, once you pass these certification exams and you're in the classroom, look for those veteran teachers that can help you out, okay, and learn from them. All right, it's extremely important until you find your own way, and you don't have to be a copycat of, of a teacher as well, okay. So uh, don't say like, "Ooh, that teacher, you know, that they're like my teaching style," and this other one over here, I don't, I would never teach like them. You could have two teachers, completely different teaching styles completely different personalities, both great teachers, students both love them, both highly effective. Learn what you learn from everybody. For those people who are successful, learn what you can and make it your own until you kind of find your own path. And, um, uh, you know, that's what it's, you know, really um, kind of the secret sauce in becoming an effective teacher is, in, you know, you've got to give yourself time so you can find your own style, your own way. But first things first, first thing is you got to get through this certification exam. And uh, with that being said, definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.